Hey there guys, Noah here, and welcome back to another Vanguard deck profile. This is the first time in a while that I'm actually doing a, like a dedicated deck profile for anything, but I figured I'd go with something that I initially started this whole channel on, um, and revamp it, and that is Chaos Breaker. So Chaos has been relatively good this meta, and going into Worlds meta, I think Chaos actually does have a shot of at least making top 8, if not outright just winning, and that is simply because it is arguably the best control deck. Now, my list is going to be a, quite a bit different from most people's lists, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt. This is just something I've been personally working on and what I feel like works best for me right now. So let's go ahead and get started with the main deck, starting off with our starter, which is going to be any of the V-Series starters. It doesn't matter which ones they are. Um, I go Dust Tail because, you know, it's a Starvader, so of course you want to do that. Then we move on to our grade threes, and I might as well start with the big man himself. Four copies of the Starvader Chaos Breaker Dragon. So Chaos Breaker is pretty self-explanatory. During your turn, if your opponent's got a lock card, he gets plus 10. Um, and then, at close per turn, Kandoros 1, your opponent gets a force marker, and then you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it. So you deny on hit strides, and then you also get a lock on the board. And then the main reason why this deck is so freaking powerful nowadays is Chaos Breaker's effect, which is when a uh, lot card is unlocked on your opponent's side, you can tire one of those lot cards for a soul blast, draw one, and then your opponent removes two markers from his or her circles or protects markers from their hand, and you get an imaginary gift force for each one. So, universally pretty damn good. Chaos Breaker, you know, when I saw this effect back when V just like when it get when it got the V series retrain, wow, this card absolutely fucking broke the meta. Uh, and it, it's it's this this card is so good like this this card was the main reason why I I had a feeling that at some point they were gonna revamp Chaos Breaker and then eventually they did so that is that then for the remainder grade threes now this is where I feel like my list is gonna be drastically different from most but I am still running Freeze Ray as a three of now Freeze Ray main the whole thing about him is whenever you dealt damage you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it but he also has a limit break effect that makes him on par with uh, all 13k like beaters and all you know great threes out of 13k for modern day so that is another side effect because there are a lot of matchups where free spray comes up specifically if you go first um and in case for some reason you can't see chaos breaker sometimes in certain matchups you actually want to go into free spray first one matchup i could definitely see some sort of value out of this is dark irregulars because they multi-attack with their rear guards a bunch, they kind of have to sit there and say, damn, um, I can't do anything to this thing, <laughs> uh, because otherwise my board is going to get locked, and then they can just steal the game from there, and that's why we run the freeze ray. And then my last grade three that I actually run outside of heal guards is the Astrolob Dragon from the Messiah deck set. Um, it's got a GB2 skill that allows you to get plus 10 if there's a lock card on the board. Um, and then when he's discarded from hand, for the cost of stride, you draw one. So sometimes I'll pitch him for stride fodder. Um, so now let's move on to the grade twos. Um, starting off with our main grade two that we like to always see is Bisection Star Bear Zirconium. So Zirconium simply has an effect that allows you to force the opponent to take the top card of their deck and place it into a rear guard circle that's open. But if they put it into back row, you draw and this unit gets plus 10. And then it has a continuous skill which allows it to get a give your Vanguard an extra critical, assuming your opponent has a lock card and they're, that they're on grade three. So that's you know, pretty good. That allows us to set up a lot of our plays. Um, and that also sets up us up for the other two grade twos that we're actually running, starting off with the original Colony Maker. So this is our main uh, searcher in the deck outside of you know our grade ones. Um, and really Colony Maker allows you to search for a Starvader as long as you got a lock card on your opponent's side of the board. Um, and that's all she's really used for. She's got quite a few targets in this list, um, um, but regardless, you know, pretty good searcher overall. And then lastly, for our grade twos, we're running four companion star star Vader photons, aka redundant star Vader photon. So he simply has the effect that allows you to lock a card on your opponent's board if they already have a locked card. So free lock on the board just for an on place, just absolutely gross. You know, you can't go wrong with that. And now for the grade ones. So on our main searcher is technically an on hit and that is craving claw running him as a full four up you need to run him as a four up in this build so craving claw simply has the effect where when its attack hits 
or the attack he boosted hit a hey, Vanguard. You can look at the top five, add a Starvader to the hand, and then shuffle the deck. And then he's got an Axe skill on rear. If your opponent's Vanguard is great through a greater, you can put this card into the soul. Choose one of your opponent's lock cards and unlock it. And then if you unlock the card, you can then choose one of your opponent's rear guards other than that locked unit and lock it. So let's say you have something that's locked in the back row and you want to lock the front row, you chuck it to soul, and then you could unlock that back row card and then lock the front row card. So keep in mind when you're using Craving Claw, you can't just activate the skill to put into the soul. You know, in case you run into a situation where you don't have enough soul, um, you could just do that without activating the full effect. Um, just keep that in mind. So you essentially do as much of the skill as possible. Then we have our Great Researcher. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, we run this as a full 4 because it's a nice thir uh, 13k booster in the off chance that we need it. Uh, but really, we need our Great Three Searchers. And now this is where the tech slots come into play. So I am actually running one of the Planetary Minerals. Uh, this combos extremely well with Chaos Breaker himself. When he's placed on Guardian, if you, you may unlock a card. And then when you do, this unit gets plus 5 shield time battle. So it's a 10k shield. But more importantly, this combos off of Chaos Breaker's skill, which, when you use it, you'll be able to draw and then get markers at overall advantage with that. And so, we we like seeing it. I would buff this up to more, but one, she's expensive, and two, I don't know where the hell I would put her in my current build. So, you know, then we're gonna run that. And then lastly, for our tech slots outside of triggers, we've got Evolution Starvator Carbon. So, Carbon was always the Starvader starter that you would run back in G, but essentially what he does is you can chuck him to Soul, and as long as you've got a locked card on the opponent's side of the board, and then search your deck for one Grade 1 or less card with Starvader, not named him, and call it to rear shuffle the deck. Essentially, on turn 2, if you really wanted to, you could go Zirconium into this and get a Craving, and then just go from there. And you could also search this off the Colony Maker, so that's actually pretty damn nice, and you also deck pick quite a bit. Alright, so, and then, obviously, we're gonna run our three PGs, which is the Thoriums. Thorium simply has an effect where if your opponent's got three or more lot cards after it guards, you draw one. And then, obviously, we gotta run Sanctitude because, you know, Sanctitude is good in premium all the time. So now we move on to the triggers. So, trigger-wise, this is gonna be very self-explanatory for those who've actually played Star Raiders before. But we are running four copies of the Paradigm Shift Dragon. Again, it's searchable off of Craving, it's searchable off of Carbon, and it's searchable off of Colony Maker, which is the main reason why we run it in this build, despite it being a 5k. And it's essentially, it has a skill where you can send it to the top of the deck, if you got a Starvator Vanguard, and the opponent has a lock card, you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it. So, yeah, this is, not only applies some sort of uh, recyclability with it, kind of like a Cursed Eye Raven, but it also allows you to just make it so that you don't deck out as easily. Um, up next, we got four Strife Water Crits. Very self-explanatory there. And then for my tech choice, we're running the Blink Messiah. Simply because of the defensive effect. So, obviously, whenever you damage check it, draw one. So, pretty good on that front. Brand Gate OT, because Brand Gate OT is good. And then, lastly, for our heals, we're running three of the heal guardians, and then one of our resource here, which is a Starvator, which is searchable, again, from the from the craving, so very useful, so if you see this early, you could technically add it if you wanted to, uh, but I've been debating on that for a little while, whether or not I want to up that to a two of, but you guys can let me know in the comment section. And then lastly, for our G zone, we're obviously going to run the Harmonix Messiah. This is a mandatory card, you have to run it. Um, the full effect, you really don't really use it for that effect. Sometimes you may use it for the damage denial effect, you know, in case of certain matchups that are going to damage deny you to all hell and back, but outside of that, you know, sometimes you go into it on purpose just so that way you can combo. Um, but outside of that, really you don't see a particular use for it. And then for the actual strides in this deck, we have two copies of the Chaos Universe. Simply, it has the effect where you could kind of ask one G Persona flip, and then you force your opponent to call one from their hand to an open rear guard circle as locked. And then, and you specifically choose where it goes. So, that's also pretty nice. And then if you've got GB2 active, essentially if you've got two cards facing up the G zone, you can choose another one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it. So, and then obviously we're running two copies of the Deluge. So Deluge is pretty self-explanatory. Instead of one 
card that's forced out of your opponent's hand, it's two. And so, yeah, that, that, that's just gross. And then it also allows you to take one of those lock cards if your opponents have four or less damage and set it to damage down face down. So sometimes if we want to just push damage while, while running the risk into hitting you know, the defensive, that's the kind of card we go into. And then up next, we're running two copies of the Blue Ball Avalanche. So sometimes you actually do want to go into this specifically for certain matchups where you really don't need to go too far with the hand manipulation, but you just want to just generic lock. This is our main card we go into for a little bit for that first drive. And then outside of that, afterward, we immediately go into its it, it, its main you know thing, which is the Blue Ball Dragon. So Blue Ball forces the opponent to choose one of their rear guards and lock it for each card face on the G zone. And then, continuous on Vanguard, it has a Nebula War Dragon effect where it gives the entire front row Star Vaders plus 3k for each lock card on the opponent's board. So, pretty good overall. And then lastly for our strides, we're actually running one Cosmic Dawn. So sometimes your opponent's gonna have a relatively low hand when they're at like 4 or 5 damage and you need more than 3 attacks. This is when Cosmic Dawn comes up. Really, and sometimes you may actually go into this, especially in the mirror, where you just want to bounce cards back to hand and just not care. Um, so this card actually comes up surprisingly often. And then lastly for our G guards, we're running two copies of the Destiny Guardian. So Destiny Guardian combos well with the Chaos Breaker because it simply has the effect where when it's placed on Guardian, you choose two locked cards and unlock them, and then you get plus 10 if you unlock two. So this combined with Chaos Breaker's effect, it can happen mid-battle phase while you're guarding your opponent's attacks. And this is the primary reason why I feel like if they ever touch Link Joker in the future on a potential ban list, they'd probably choice restrict them. Because despite Link Joker not having the best G guards, I think that combo is pretty gross. And then one Big Ripper just for the fat shield and the potential draw. And then lastly, we're running one Cosmo Reef. Uh, because Cosmo Reef is good, Cosmo Reef is life, and honestly, essentially it allows you to get an extra back row lock, assuming you need it. I've debated taking him out a couple times, but I'm still undecisive on what card I would throw in for that. So yeah, that's pretty much the deck profile. I wanted to try a new approach when it comes to making content creation, and I figure... Now that I actually have a somewhat decent working tripod, I can kind of attempt to make, like, actual, like, in-person deck profiles and whatnot. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this list and what you would personally actually do to fix it. And until next time, this is Noah, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye, everyone.